Hello, people. This is Peter from Peter and Jack Talks Wrestling. Peter Talks Wrestling with and Peter Talks Smackdown as of late. Um, I'm here to introduce a new podcast to the PJTWCentral.com family of podcasts. Um, this features a young lady who was with me uh, last week for Peter and Jake Talks Wrestling Review. Her name is Alexa Feldman. And if you listen to that podcast last week, we came up with the idea of her actually starting a Total Divas podcast. And this is the debut of that podcast. And it's called Dang. That's with an exclamation point. Like wham, you know, like wham. <laughs> the band. It's with an exclamation point. It's not just wham. So Dang. Dang. We love Diva's podcast. And it features Alexis and her sweetie by the name of Will. This is their first time around. Um, I'm really honored to be able to add this to the uh, Peter and Jake Talks Wrestling uh, Central family. Um, you can find her on Twitter under Sailor Lexi. I'm not sure how you can find him, but... um. This is their first time around, and uh, being that this is the Divas, Total Divas f- finale, we won't be getting another podcast until July when it picks back up. Uh, this is basically, and they probably explain it in, in the podcast as well, but this is the, uh, I guess you would call the pilot, being that that's their first time. Um, there's some things that could change, uh, but we'll get that all out of the way come July. Right now, we just want to get it out there, get you guys impressions. So hit her up at um, at Sailor Lexi. That's S A I L O R L E X I. Sailor Lexi. And at the same time, uh, I'll plug the rest of the podcast from uh, Peter and Jake Talks Wrestling Central. You have Peter and Jake Talks Wrestling that uh, uploads on Wednesday. You have Peter Talks Smackdown that will be going up on Fridays. You have Peter Talks Wrestling With that will also be coming up on Fridays. And then you also have Fast and the World Podcast where Jake of Peter and Jake Talks Wrestling and The Amazing Fritz uh, review NXT. So... I think I've done enough talking. Let's go into the premiere, pilot, beginning, genesis of the Dang We Love Divas podcast. I hope you enjoy. Be sure to hit her up, uh, rate, subscribe, thumbs up, comment, do anything. Do it, all those things, share, because this is how we keep the movement um, going. Uh, and without further ado. Hello, hello. Hey. Welcome to the Dang We Love Divas podcast. <laughs> this is Alexa. This is Will. And we are dishing on those d- d- damn divas. dirty divas. They're, they're dirty. They're not dirty. Well, yeah. Rose dumb. is dirty. Okay. A little bit. Just kidding. We love you, Rose. We love all divas. And we just finished watching the epic two-hour season finale of Total Divas, E's hit reality television show about my favorite part of the WWE. Would you say they're your favorite part? Oh, definitely. I mean, they don't get enough time that, on... Yeah. They're kind of the underdog. The main shows, so naysayers aside, I think Total Divas is a great platform for the girls because we get to know them we get to know some of the other wrestlers too we get to know John Cena a little bit better Daniel Bryan Precious Usos that's great so the finale was broken down into two episodes the first episode had like three main storylines and that was Paige and her new boo Um, Natty and TJ being freaks as usual and then the Bellas and their brother uh, weird (laughs) nude selfie yeah totally not weird (laughs) situation yeah he's a normal guy um yeah about that well anyway I guess let's just go into it we can start with the three amigas Rosa uh, Foxy right. and Paige and they decide that they are going to go on a super super classy 
trip, girls trip to Kiwas, because oh, that's yeah. super. You know, they kick it off classy too. I think they start with waxing uh, Rose's vagina. Right. right the the, the total stuff. divas do not get professionally waxed. They are there for each other. They are. <laughs> they they help each other out. So Paige brings out the box of waxing yeah. gear. Rosa Rosa's quote. What was it? I have a cat growing, and then immediately just whips yeah. it out. She whips it out. She's waiting for a cue. Like, that's, that's, oh, this, this is an acceptable time to do this? All right. <laughs> and uh, Paige and Foxy just really <laughs> waxed her vagina for her. They were like, all right. Good you know, friends. Yeah. I don't think my friends would do that for me. No, yeah. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, I can't think of one that would do that for me. Yeah. You know, my friends would wax my yeah. pubes. So anyway, we we yeah. see this classy start to the season finale. Uh, we go into we just see Cameron Ar- Ariane for a brief moment talking to Paige about her new yeah. Doc Martens because Paige is such a alt girl. She she's rocking the Docs. Um, and then she brings up her her new boo, not her boyfriend, her boo, her friend, the singer of Amorosa. Is that what the... Okay. That's the band's name. I couldn't remember. Amorosa. Uh, which is like what? Like a, It was kind of like a hardcore band? Yeah, it was like kind of like soft, hardcore. <laughs> anyway, as Paige describes it, it's a girl's trip, but you gotta have a little bit of candy. So she wants to bring her fuck buddy. That's what she says. I'm yeah. not, not dissing Paige. But... Uh, then, okay, so they get to Key West. Right. The girls listen in on Bradley's amazing singing in the shower. And then Rosa gets, like, super wet because Rosa is so horny all the fucking time. <laughs> and she, like, and they, Why Rosa won't anyone fuck out? Rosa? Like, I know she's crazy, but that girl is, like, is always trying to get it. Or, yeah. like, talking about she- getting it. Or like yeah, I think the main thing is that maybe she even is, but she just that's like a talking point for her. I like guess. She enjoys, Poor Rosa. Yeah, she. I think it's like her way of vibing with the other divas. It's like I'm still trying to get some. True. Yeah. Well, Rosa lets Paige know that she's turned on for Paige at how great of a singer Bradley is. Yeah, she was. Very, she was like Bradley oh, comes oh. out, and Paige is just rude as hell to him because yeah. Paige is a badass bitch. And then someone makes some comment about Rose's tits, as always, because that's always a thing. Oh, yeah, dude. Then they go ride on some jet skis and flirt with a local boy and piss Bradley off. Well, he's, he's an emotional guy, he's as a, we learn. He's, he's a an artiste. Boy. Um, yeah. Paige ends up flipping out about her rent, so we see the the rage of Paige in her everyday life, it's not the, just... The uh, rampage. The rampage. Thank you. Uh, there's a really good quote from Rosa during this trip where she's like, this is just great, because we never get to enjoy the sun and the air. Yeah, we, like, never, we, no, we never get to go out in the sun and the air. <laughs> it's the, yeah. Where are they keeping Rosa? It's notorious for not giving air to their <laughs> employees, so... I'm glad they were able to get some. Yeah, so... Okay, so then they end up going on this sunset cruise, and then Paige, who has been really, like, mean to Bradley all the time, must have gotten drunk or something, because she's, like, all over him. And then he, like, sings that song for her, remember? And then, like, Rosa yeah. and Fox are, like, crying. Yeah, they're, they're crying. Yeah, because Paige of isn't. from Paige. happiness, from <laughs> jealousy, from horniness, oh, like I don't I, know, they're I crying they, though. I don't think they, they even know, but <laughs> I think uh, Paige. Uh, ma- what's interesting to me is she made a point to immediately after, like I didn't cry. Okay, like they're crying. Oh, I yeah, didn't. she's like I don't cry ever. Yeah. Very still, guard is very much still up at that. She point. won't cry, but she will have one of the most intense makeout sessions I've seen on Total Divas yet. <laughs> And if, for you viewers With, keeping track, this one gets particularly... I mean, I'm keeping track of yeah. the make-out sessions. Damn. Yeah. But, yeah, oh, uh, Bradley is kind of gross, but I'd like the funky little synth they played during Oh, that was right. They had a nice little... <laughs> so, the cruise happens. Bradley thinks he's in there. Like, he's like, I sung this little song for her. I got it. You know, we're good. Yeah. And then Paige is just kind of like... 
standoffish yet again, so he pulls Foxy oh. aside, and he's like, asking her about Paige, why she's so hot and cold, and Foxy's like, come on, dude, Paige is a wild child. Does she say that she exactly? She says wild child, yeah. So, oh, a lot of folksy little idioms that, that get thrown around. And, well, Foxy's kind of just corny, yeah. and she's precious, though. Yeah, I no, that, that was, yeah. Oh, she, she was fair. You know, she's, yeah, she was oh. fair about uh, Bradley, too, because like, he was kind of being annoying. A but she was like, bitch. Yeah, oh, oh, yeah, that's what artist. she's like, He's an artist. He's yeah. emotional. Um, she's thinking about these things. But she encourages Bradley to confront Paige, and so he does that, and then Paige is like, Basically, just like, dude, you're just a fuck. Like, you're just like he. She just straight up says that. Numerous points, actually. Yeah, she but that's the first says, time. Stop being a fuck, okay? No, 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 not like saying that he's a fuck, but like oh, literally, yeah, like you're just a fuck. A fuck. Yeah. yeah, like you're just a lay. Yeah. Um. And so after this, yeah. she talks to the girls and complains about Bradley. Lets them know that she, that he that she said that that she told yeah. him that he's just a fuck. The girls are like, oh my god. If anyone said that to me, yeah, I would Rosa die. Like well, because Rosa's probably yeah. having her a million fucking times. Poor Rosa. And so they kind of, like, comfort her after, like, Paige is like, well, it's because I've been hurt before, and that's why I don't want to let Bradley in, and blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> they all kind of, like, cry and hug, and they're like, Paige, just go open up to to yeah. him, and, you know... Foxy's just, just trying to yeah. give some good advice, and Rose is just, you know, doesn't really help at all. But that's okay. Well, she hugs her, and I mean, that's, you know, she's helpful in her own way. I guess. But, yeah, so then Paige goes, talks to Bradley, and they work things out. And that yeah. is what happens as far as the three amigas in this episode. Next, we're going to talk about Natty and um. TJ, Tyson Kidd. And this is the episode of Raw where Grumpy Cat hosted Raw. So, of course, these fools were hella excited to meet Grumpy Cat. A little too excited yeah. to meet Grumpy Cat. Um, they were confused. Like they, like it was almost like they thought that Grumpy Cat had a better career. And they had to like suck up to Grumpy Cat or something. <laughs> like they were like, wait, Grumpy Cat's here? How, how do I look? Like, well, no. The thing was, you could see... like as Nat's talking to like Grumpy Cat's manager like the crazy wheels are turning in her head because she's thinking about oh, her precious cat which she well, does have she precious has, cats has, don't get me wrong quality. come on I mean as far as you're they, just as delusional as Natty right now I, they, I guess so I mean I, I you know I, there are so I, many cats I, I, I in the world cats, right now in the internet fame it's a saturated market of cats I'm, that's what sure. I'm saying and you're a, you're already a, a celebrity in a way why are you trying to make your cats face but that's what's going on you can see Natty's like oh sh-, and like shit I need tips from Grumpy Cat's owners and she tells this story about how Cat Fancy which I think is that a magazine about cats yes they like reached out to her and Ty about like their cats and then Tyson was like yeah and then you wrote that like crazy email back and then you scared them off so like cat fancy was like never mind because of how crazy they are no that's all tyson tyson like briefly mentions it because they're fucking crazy about cats we love cats me and will don't get me wrong we we love cats but this is like her cats i think those are some precious (laughs) cats but you know the I, I just want to see the email. That, that That's like... That's I'm very point. curious. Hackers it? out there, can we get on yeah, the forget, natty... Forget Hillary Clinton. I want to see these emails. <laughs> these are the ones that are concerned me. I'm grumpy, uh, fans. Right. So the, the craziness continues with Natty's mom, which she's like, she's my best friend. We talk a million yeah. times a day. And her mom's like, now he's like, I got a million things to do. Her mom's like, okay, I'll take the cats off your hands or whatever. And so, cut to we're at Natty and Tyson's house. They are talking about the really tacky decorations that his mom has around, like, I guess, like, maple leaf placemats. Yeah. That lamp that's, like, dressed like a woman. Yeah, that one actually is, that's... I like that. That's a good piece. Oh my god. It's a good piece. I think house. you and Natty are like destined to yeah. be together. Because we, we both have high hopes for those cats. And well, Natty doesn't like the furniture mom gives her. It's like just sort of. What did know. she say that one time? I'm going to go watch Nancy Grace now. I don't know if you guys would actually get along. But anyway, so Tyson's trying to get Natty <laughs> you know. to talk to her mom about 
the tacky decorations. And Maddie's like, no, she does so much for us. And, like, emphasizes that in a weird way. Like, are they... Is there a family wealthy? Or, I, don't, I don't know. Either way, her mom shows yeah. up, brings the cats out of the carriers. The first one has, like, a... Like, fucked they, up they just did the underbelly they did the underbelly like in yeah. patches they groomed she had the cat groom or well we later find out it was grumpy cat's manager suggestion and then the other cat has what the lion See, cut he's so his sabotaging body the shaved he's, he's looking out for grumpy cat he's he's he to his good theory his, uh, you know is wasn't his, even his thinking crooked, about that crooked groomer that he sends all the other cats to to get them, you know, fucked right. them over. So keep, these keep horrible haircuts, <laughs> which Grumpy Cat's manager suggested, is a ploy to sabotage Natty's dreams. Yeah, Grumpy Cat is never going down. He's, oh, yeah, no, hell no. Grumpy Cat hosted Raw. Like, yeah, what are come cat on. Ever hosted no, Raw? no, no. What other animal in general? But anyway, that's kind of, that's really wrong. all we see with Natty and Tyson. And that's really enough to just for me because yeah. they're so crazy and uh, I don't know it's it's a weird that's a weird storyline yeah, it, it, it's, that's the light storyline honestly with yeah, all the things going true. on with the emotional like the drama of like what well, because they used to be the heavy storyline used to be like they were going to like a divorce and well, you know, was, oh, I think they're trying to redeem that yeah. with this weird cat thing. That they yeah. said. If anything, it's making it weirder, in yeah, my opinion. Yeah, like sort of just push that aside and have filled the void with, like, little issues. Like, what, you know, how are we going to fix our cat's haircut? Like, <laughs> All right, well, let's, let's move on yeah. then to the last and weirdest storyline of this first part of the finale with... JJ, Nikki, and Brie Bella's brother sending the weird mm. nude selfie. So it starts with the Nikki and Brie are hanging out with their cousins, yeah. and I, 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 it's really precious to me. I know the Bellas get a lot of heat, but I really think on this show, and I know that they think they're the stars of the show, and you know they kind of are. Yeah. I uh, mean. Yeah, I mean it's. Their, their story, I mean, there are two of them, but their stories are intertwined, and they usually, like, a lot well, of Well, and they date, you know, two pretty big yeah. girls. And, and, I mean, yeah. and also, they just have the, they do have charm, and especially, like, oh, yeah. seeing them in moments like this with their family, like, you, they're really good girls. Like, yeah. they play heels, but they have hearts of gold, and, you know, oh, yeah. they're really family-oriented. Whatever, they're hanging out with their cousins, they don't get to see them a lot, they're drinking, exchanging stories, and... So, so out of nowhere, they get a text, a group text, but it's not really a group text, it's a text to Nikki and Brie only, and it's from JJ, their brother, it is a nude selfie, and, and, they get, yeah. and just like in the weirdest pose, like his arm is like up in, and like he's just like... Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a standard, you know... It's a mirror, it's like dick mirror, pic, yeah, so full body, nude, nude whatever, pic. but uh, his reason, like... He, like, supposedly it's for his of, wife. Yeah, instead of sending it to my But somehow he sent it to my two sisters. Right. And um, so you know, th- and, and so like three questions it initially. She's like she's like, but wait, just you know, running through this again, like how does that happen? And he doesn't really address it at all. No, it, he talks it, about this late you're 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 fast forwarding. That's oh, okay. not till later. Okay. They don't even have that conversation yet because they're still with the cousins. Oh, right. So the right. cousins are like, what's there. going on? Yeah. Bree is like, uh, and then Nick is like, look at this! And just kind of like starts showing off. Not even. Showing though. them. Well, you know, she doesn't. They, like, they were sitting next to her and she just gets yeah. it. She's just like, oh my goodness. True. And they're like, what? And then she, she like, like kind of like, yeah, it look, at them. like she's like, let me send it to you. Like she's like, True. she lets them see the screen, you know? Right. Yeah. Right. So she shows them this, this nude selfie. The cousins are like, what? Why? Like, why would they send it to, to you guys? Like, you know, this is weird. Yeah. Brie's like, oh, that's gross. How does that turn? JD's wife on I would never want a nude selfie from Daniel Bryan <laughs> and Nikki's like I want one from Cena like mm, cause Nikki's a freak that's not even that freaky of a thing it, it's not that freaky if, if they did that and like like you know that would be fine and everything but like it's I just don't know if I buy the story of like oops like I sent it to both my si- like, right like, t- let, right. right so let's, let's yeah. get to that in a bit Alright, flash to Brian and Bree's house in Phoenix. 
Brian is talking to Bree about how he's writing a book about his life right now, and and you know, telling him to tell stories about him and Bree, like about the time they first bone, and apparently Seamus and some other dude showed up shirtless, and like <laughs> Seamus is like petting her head when she was naked. It was like a really weird story. Yeah. But they thought it was hilarious. I they were like laughing. The only snippets of the real weird stuff, you know. What gonna, between Brian and yeah, Bree? Yeah, I want to know more about that, and I want to see the email. Of the, 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 All right, you and this email. I mean that email. But so this is so they're talking about sex. I guess leads Bree into bringing up JJ's nude selfie to Brian. Brian is like, "Why did you even look at your brother's?" And Bree's like, "I did it!" I got blah, blah, blah. And Brian's like, "Oh, do you want me to send you a nude selfie of my?" flaccid penis <laughs> Daniel Bryan is hilarious I love him <laughs> he's really funny yeah and they're a precious couple um it was a quick wit oh like that kid, the yeah. cancer kid yeah on Raw oh. tonight oh, what's his name Connor the Crusher the shout Crusher, out shout right. out Connor the Crusher on Raw tonight inducted into the Hall of Fame precious yeah. baby child when the that was really Ultimate. awesome. Anyway, but that's not Total Divas. So let's okay, talk about sorry. that another time. It's okay. That is worth talking about, though. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, finally, we see JJ for the first time in the episode to defend himself. Uh, he comes over to Bree's house to help her with some crap around the house. Yeah. And Bree's like... Okay, dude, like, I'm glad you're wearing clothes or something like that. And he's like, well, yeah, about that. Um, So I was texting my wife, Lauren, and I was texting you guys at the same time, and I kept going back and forth. You had a group text? And I must, them? no. And I must have thought, no, he said it was a separate, separate text with his wife, and then a separate text with Bri and Nikki. It was group text he was going with, back with and forth. With Nikki and Bri. And Bri, maybe. Yeah, yes. Was, so no. So I'm one. Picturing him accidentally no, no, no. sending it no. twice. Like apparently yeah. he says he was talking to Nikki and Brianna group text, and he was also nah. talking to his wife. Okay. And going back and forth. Yeah. And then didn't realize that he was saying that to, that is bullshit. You're not going that fast between messages. And to go like send that. a picture. Like, like that's that's an one, attachment that's... that takes time to go to it. You're not and just like, oops, I sent just, okay to like, you. Like, hey, look at this BuzzFeed article. It's like it's an attachment right. that like I. Would make very sure that it's not being sent to my. Have we had this discussion before? Because honestly, throughout the whole show of Total Divas, JJ is always kind of like creepy with the with the Bella twins. Like yeah. he's their brother, and he's just always kind of like. Like it's not like I'm not like I don't don't want to make any sort of assumption along the lines of like no it, it being yeah like like something going on there. Like, but he's but always he's, he's kind of like, weird, right? Like, yeah, like he definitely just is. He's just probably like a, a strange guy to begin with, and like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. It, it, it just uh, the way he Maybe. handled it too was like where he got so blamey on them. Like he, like he obviously knew he, like he fucked up, and like, yeah. and like he got like so like, well, this fuck you for like. You know, sh like showing that to the people sitting next to you, like, like, dude, you sent like a picture of your like penis right. to me, like, if you should be understanding right. at, at this point. But right. so yeah, so JJ is like <laughs> offers that excuse. Bree, I guess, accepts it, and then is like, oh, by the way, I feel I really feel bad for the cousins though who had to see it, and JJ actually is like, what? Yeah. How did the cousin see it? She's like, oh, I guess Nikki showed up. What you mean to be honest? Like, if I was in, if I was earnestly like, I just accidentally sent a dick pic to my like someone, and then they showed it to someone else. Like, that would be grounds to be upset. Uh, and I just think that he, he got yeah, very blamey. Yeah, like, like, you know, like, like, like it was weird. Like he could be, a, he could be embarrassed without. Uh, projecting that onto Nikki yeah. completely. It was, it was, I don't think she was really at fault in this in, in this instance. Right, and so that comes up when uh, the Bellas meet up with their mom, and uh, Daniel Bryan's there too. And Bell's mom is like, "Is that really their mom? Like, she's like an actress or something." I swear <laughs> to God, she's so she's like great, but she seems so like rehearsed and like she's blonde. She doesn't well, really look like the Bellas. Their dad she's too. Not really blonde and and and, and oh, honestly, true. she uh uh you know the Bellas are super magnetic. It's kind of what makes them great wrestlers That's too. True. So it would make sense that they grow up with maybe. Someone who was also... I, I know. Every time I just hear him, it's like, uh, is that really their mom? Anyway. Yeah, my, I, I anyway. So they're at lunch talking about this. 
debating whether it was wrong of Nikki to show the cousins, which they all agree, yes, that was wrong. And then JJ's wife shows up, and they're all like, oh, where's JJ? Is he in the car? And she's like, no, he's not coming. And I'm guessing either he's pissed at Nikki, he's embarrassed, like, something... This is before she confronts him. This is right before she confronts him. yeah. And so then, at this dinner, that's why Nikki's like, Brie, come with me, we're gonna go to JJ's house and talk to JJ. So they go to JJ's house, he's so mad, he doesn't even want to let them in at first, right? he's like freaking out. And so, but he does, and the whole camera crew, and like, oh, you're so embarrassed, but you're gonna let the world... Like, okay, whatever. But anyway... Um, he is well, he talking. probably wanted to defend himself to the cameras at True. this point. Like he's True. probably like, "Fuck!" Like, True. <laughs> um, so yeah, so he's like, you know, obviously upset that she showed his, their cousins. Yeah. Uh, and Nikki's like, "Oh, don't worry, we're all just laughing about it." He's like, "That's even worse." And they're like, <laughs> "They're like, oh, well, they're just laughing." Like don't he's worry, like, "Well, I know la- it's not at my dick size because I have a huge." Fu- Dead yeah, that I camera. show my sisters in a yeah. text message. Like, Which, what? by the way, guys, what did you think? Like, just you know, while we're on the subject, like, not trying to be weird, but like, would you say like, good? Like, yeah, okay, we'll, we'll go we'll, later when the cameras are off. Uh, um, and then he, yeah, so he's, like, super angry, which, like, to a degree I get, but, yeah, he sent it, like, it was yeah. his weird mistake that he made, and so yeah, then... And, he, and he's putting it on Nikki, but... And this is, no, and then the, the most fucked up part is that he's like, well, you, just because you like to have all your shit yeah, hanging he, out he, he all he the time, her. and Nikki's like, what? And she just happens so to, like, obvious. push her hair back, he's like, see, you're, like, pushing your hair back to show your cleavage, and da 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 and Nikki's like, what? Like, f- fuck yeah. you, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, She's, you know, and she storms off, but you know, and this is like a thing that I feel that happens a lot with Nikki is that she doesn't really always stand up for herself very well. Like, like she'll, like she'll kind of settle for just being like, you know what, like uh, I'm gonna drop it or I'm gonna walk away or whatever. But like, yeah. she, she doesn't make a lot of points to defend herself, and like, especially with someone like, uh, you know, her, both her siblings really like they were more like dominant i guess when like arguments yeah, and, and things like that like they tend to she sort of tends to get marginalized or blamed for things a lot because she's just the one that kind of backs down first and takes the blame for things. oh nikki so, your public persona is very different yeah. than your true self Cause, yeah because the nikki in the story which actually is, leads to segues perfectly into the next part oh, so right. she leaves mad whatever um the last little bit on them is they're at they're taping Raw, I believe, and all the divas are kind of just hanging out, you know, looking at Instagram, whatever. Paige is like, "Oh my God, look at this!" And it's a so from Nikki's own account, but Nikki didn't know that it was posted. Uh, a, a picture gets posted of a Valentine like poem slash card that Nikki made for John Cena. It's got like personal pictures. No. <laughs> it's like really really corny and like precious. Yeah. Like a little like high school girl wrote it. Yeah. And so Paige is like, like reading it to admire. everybody, and Nikki comes up and she's like, "What? That's posted? Like I didn't post that. It's on my Instagram. How did it get yeah. there?" And everyone's kind of like making fun of her, and she immediately thinks, "Oh, it's JJ like with rev- like put like exacting his." revenge on me. It's a really weird way to get revenge. That's a weird assumption. Like, oh, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, because Nikki doesn't want people to see this vulnerable side of her. And, you know, it's yeah. it's embarrassing. Like, oh. I guess it's a, I would be embarrassed. Ew. Especially like poetry. Oh, poetry's so lame. <laughs> anyway. Well, this is the message to all the listeners out there. All poetry is lame. I'm not saying that. There's okay. great poetry. Yeah, I on. just mean love poems. Like Love is lame, maybe. Yeah, yes. okay. a little bit. Anyway, but she finds out it was actually Brie trying to teach her a lesson uh, Brie. about sharing personal things Brie with both. people. And, of course, this gets Nikki to realize maybe I shouldn't have shown my bro's junk to all my cousins. And... Yeah. The episode is resolved. Um, yeah, not in the way that not in any of the resolves I wanted in that situation. Just, <laughs> just Nikki again being like, "Sorry, guys, it was my fault." Like, you just sorry, want you sorry want I got that you want the email about Natalie's cats. Oh, oh, you want please. Nikki stand up for herself, and you want a threesome yeah. between Paige, Foxy, and Rosa. So well, none of those things are gonna happen. I, mean, I know, I know well, you. Spot on, though. Oh, I know you. Um, uh, uh, also more Naomi. 
that's that, that's what I really want. Is I want her back in the show. Doesn't everyone want more Naomi? She's, yeah, the, she's best. the best. And, and, and you Naomi know, Trim- her, Trinity. Her, her, her relationship. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm using a wrestler name. No, it's okay. But, uh, yeah, I think I just love uh, her relationship as well. Like, as, I think that's the. Uh, one of the more genuine, just, and it seems healthy. Oh, her and Uso? Yeah, yeah. they're amazingly precious. It's, it just seems healthy, and it, it doesn't seem like it's just for the cameras. Yeah, you know? yeah. Okay, so we're going to move on to the second part of the finale, and this is where the juicier tidbits are to be found. That sounds really gross. Juicier tidbit. Like, it's a stupid phrase. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. Well, Sorry. It's all right. Okay. We're going to move past it. All right. And um, as far as this episode, the three main plot points are Paige and her boyfriend, um, Eva and her husbander, douche lord Jonathan, oh, the and guy. Sorry, the, Eva the, and the, uh, the last is the, <laughs> the question of the Bellas and their future, um, right. what they're going to do. That's, that's so, the biggest news of the... Yeah, that's what yeah. they're touting as their big shocker, which I don't know how real it is. But anyway, we'll get to that. Yeah. We're going to go over all of them. Okay, so um, we're going to start with uh, Paige's new guy, which um, the episode starts with Rosa and Paige picking Foxy up at the airport. And basically, this is just to let us know that Paige decided to officially start a relationship with Bradley, which she had been debating in the last, in part one of the finale. Um, and we saw that. Um, so yeah, fast forward to Raw, and (laughs) we both, just quickly, Natty and TJ aren't really in this episode, but Natty does say this weird thing about like, oh yeah, me and TJ are finally back together and good. Except for, and then she kind of like stops, and I wanted her to say like what, and I then Eva, Eva, and I think oh, is Paige she... are like, oh, is she not is he not hitting it right, or blah blah blah, and she's like he's hitting it right, blah blah. So we never find <laughs> out what the problem <laughs> is. Um, we do see uh, Natty kind of like hitting on Eva in the segment too, like your butt is looking awesome, and I'm into it. Even though Maddie has had, like, lesbophobia before in this show, now she's kind of like... Maybe if it's on Natty's, her terms. Maybe she's in the show. Like everything dominant. has to be on yeah. Maddie's terms. She's fucking crazy, man. Just a crazy broad. But anyway, so Bradley is at Paige's match, and she's nervous because she's finally let her guard down, and she's yeah. so happy, and she, she messes up her match with Emma, but she's still... Ends with a PTO and when whatever. Um, uh, the Emocrats were. Oh, the Emocrats. That's yeah. that's a yeah. It's a good name, Emma. Poor Emma. Yeah. Um, See, it's bad to be an Emocrat in Florida. <sighs> so you know. That's oh, but one. Good hey. one. Anyway, so after this match, Paige and Bradley are hanging in the hotel room, and yeah. she asks him to move in with her, and they've only been dating like a month, a few months, and so he's, like, hella hesitant, and that's, like, kind of understandable. Yeah, especially since, like, here's the thing, I, I gotta defend him on this one, that she was the one who was, like, you're you're just a fuck, like, ha- how long ago? But she brings that up, she's, like, and, see, and that's, at first, I was the hesitant one, and yeah. now the tables have but turned, it, but blah, blah, blah. The, you I have a horrible like British it. accent, sorry. <laughs> 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 but, uh, like, like, just, like, that reversal is, is, is the what I would be most apprehensive about. Like, it doesn't matter. Yeah, like, oh, oh like, yeah. You know, like, I, you wanted me to be more, like, into the relationship, but yeah, but, like, if you change that much in such a short amount of time, like, that is something to be apprehensive about. Yeah. You know, if someone goes back and forth. So, I, in, in, in this instance, I totally sympathize with being like, eh, I don't know. Yeah, you know? no, I totally get it. And he's, like, really hesitant, but he's, like, but, yeah, like, if you meet my mom. So, Paige goes to meet Bradley's mom, 
and she wants she's like pressuring him to tell her that they're moving in together yeah. and he's yeah. like give me time give me time and she's kind of like whatever being crazy but it's Paige she's crazy yeah. she's and job, though, otherwise, like, she, yeah she meets her mom she like she wasn't kidding about being like good at meeting people like she's her confidence level is like through the roof yeah she was very she was jumping in their arms she, immediately she just met her and dropped a fake pregnancy on her and was confident enough to carry that joke without that like oh, fault, like she said, she said I'm a kid. The, the, the joke was that he was like, she was underage. I think. Oh, I thought. She didn't say I have a kid. She said like, like, I'm with child is what she said. She is saying. Oh, she's, I think she said I'm a child. No, that's a really <laughs> creepy too. Like, well, that, oh, that's why I said it. That's a wow. That's a dark joke, right? When no, I it. thought you just wanted the pregnancy thing. Oh no. But anyway, yeah. Fake pregnancy aside, Paige um, bonds with Bradley's family and they're playing with the horses, but she's still trying to get Bradley to admit that they're gonna move in together, and he's like, "Bitch, chill. Like, give." me yeah, some time which I get up. again yeah. so they're in the car Bradley mom brings up this kind of funny thing that Paige made a drunk video and was like to her before they even met yeah. hi mom I'm gonna marry Bradley so I'm sure Bradley's mom already yeah, thinks she's, she's kind of crazy yeah, she, she, that was, she brought it up in like a chill way like Mm, it was kind of like a little passive aggressive but anyway this leads to Bradley's sister dropping the bombshell that Bradley had previously been married and not told Paige and Paige tries to play cool but is also kind of like well you know why didn't you tell me and he's like well we've been only been dating a few months and I'm not gonna like get into my personal history and I'm like that's something you tell someone yeah. like and the way you said that too is like so, like, like, like he's a weird guy. He's a weird guy. Yeah. So, um, once they get back to Bradley's house, um, she thinks that they're in private, but like, then they flash and like his mom and sister are like listening on yeah. the other side. But anyway, she's like, "Dude, why the fuck didn't you tell me you were married? And like, also, why haven't you brought up that we're moving in yet?" And Bradley finally is just kind of like, well, you know what? I might not be ready to move in. And also, I'm not going to speak to you about my marriage. Like, I'm not. I'm not just not. And she's, like, pissed. And it's totally understandable. Yeah. And, I mean, she was really pissed because we even see. Yeah, yeah. The information is one thing, but he's being like, he's like, you don't have a right to know about it. Right. And he, like, he storms outside. And we see the producers and, like, the camera people, like, trying to, like, comfort Paige. And Paige's, like, asking them, am I being unreasonable? It's, like, a really <laughs> real moment, I feel like. Yeah, the, the whole bit, like, panning to the to the mother and the sister listening was, like, a touch of, like... Just no, I'm talking about when the camera, yeah, no, the I'm producer saying, comes thing, in. Thing, yeah. Thing, it starts with that. And then, like, after they leave, yeah, they sort of break the fourth wall completely, which is weird for, like, a reality show. But, like, yeah. and, you know... They, so she goes outside to talk to Bradley. They talk a little bit, and basically she tells him it's over. Screw you, like you're a yeah. douche, which she is. And Paige is so hot and awesome. Like, she don't need to deal with that shit. Mm-hmm. Bye, Amorosa. That's freaking the name of the... That's the name of the person from Donald Trump's show. What's that show called? Uh, the, the Apprentice? The Apprentice, right? That crazy yeah. woman named yeah. Amorosa. Why would you um, name your band after her? Is it, is it after her? I don't know. Um, anyway, I don't want to talk about this segment anymore because okay. I don't like that guy. And Paige is obviously better off. Well, yeah, I mean, it's a shame that she... It has to be... She was saying, like, uh, some of the, her past where she had felt hurt. She had made herself vulnerable oh, in the past. And, and, you know, I feel that she... It's a shame that it has to be all or nothing. Like she, to her, like letting her guard down is like a thing. Like where she's like wants to move in. Yeah. And, like, it becomes this like the, like that step is a huge step. It's like a leap, uh, and uh, which is the same because you know like m- the normal way you would go about that is you know you sort of slowly get to know someone. But right. It's, yeah, it's sort of a jump. Well, from. I mean, and the reason she suggested, it, even though it was too soon. Her point was, like, you know, I travel a lot. We barely see each other. So, like, if we yeah. live together, that might increase our time spent together. Because she's on the road, well, like, all the time. She's yeah. 300 days that's, a year or some shit point, like that. Yeah. yeah. In in her defense. But anyway, moving on to another person who rushed into something, Eva. <laughs> Frickin' Jonathan. Which we saw them get married on the show. Um, and that was super. That was, like, it's after a few situation. months. Yeah. Her family hates him or hated him. They're like, 
like him, I guess, now. But he's, well, he's helping her career-wise a lot. Right. Um, he's right, and that's what this is. This whole little storyline is about is. So I guess they're going into the hair extension business because Eva uses hair extensions for her. You know, she's known yeah, for her vibrant her. red yeah, locks, and so they're gonna. Cash in on that shit. Like, yeah. you know, I mean, it's a smart idea. Everyone knows they're for something, you know, you can make a brand about it. Like, and, and he's, is, I guess, super business savvy. That's his thing. He has an MBA, apparently. Yeah. Um, so they're meeting with the hair extension people. They bring, it's like Eva, Jonathan, and her hairstylist. Uh, what was his name? Jose. Jose. <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> And so they they talk to the dude, the main dude at the hair extension, whatever you call it, company. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Advertising. And he like kind of leaves the room for a second, and John and because she mentioned something about well, I have to check with the WWE because WWE is super strict about what you do yeah. outside when you have a contract. Totally understandable. You yeah. are like a marketable product at this point. Like you have to do that. Yeah. And Jonathan is like, no, like. Stop bringing up the WWE. That's totally separate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He just gets really snappy, and Cuts he's like, down. he's he's a douche. Well, so and and that didn't make a lot of sense to me too. Just the, the, them not being connected. They are totally connected because she wouldn't have the brand uh, to sell to this extension company of like, look at me with, with my famous red hair. If she wasn't in WWE, right? To, like that is very connected. In fact, you right. should. Probably bringing up WWE a lot with, you know. No. Um, so, you know, he was kind of like, oh, that's lame, but she kind of keeps her mouth shut and, you know, it's like, yeah, I guess this guy's making me tons of money. Like, I'm just going to listen to him. Also, he's my husband. I'm not going to start shit, whatever. Yeah. It's, it's um, a weird cut to, brand. like, uh, Eva, another one of her friends who's a makeup artist, and Jose, her hairstylist, are doing, like, some kind of tutorial video and, like, doing a little photo shoot. And Jonathan comes over and just kind of, like, bitches at Eva about, like, the time constraints and, like, tries to control what she's wearing and kind of, like, snaps in her, you know, it's kind of weird. Then later, um, I guess after they did the photo shoot part and they're doing the tutorial part, he's, like, he comes over again and is, like, your makeup isn't done yet and is like yelling at her friends like you didn't do your job right like you need this needs to go from natural to bold in 10 minutes or some crap like that and yeah it sometimes you know like you're only seeing pieces of this so we don't really know exactly like maybe there's more to it i don't want to give him the benefit of the doubt but it does seem like he's he's coming out of uh he oftentimes comes out of nowhere like like he'll like he'll start criticizing one thing and then he'll criticize another. Like he, yeah. like he's resenting so many things at once and then he just sort of lets it out and he's like bursts. Yeah. But so Eva kinda says like, you know, it's one thing to treat me this way, which I'm I'm sick of it, but you know, I just bite my tongue, but don't talk to my friends that way, you know, they're yeah. helping me out with this project and that kind of pisses her off. So yeah. then we go to another photo shoot separate than the one we we're talking about just now. And this is for her actual extension line, whereas that photo shoot before was just kind of like a thing she was doing yeah. for herself. So they're at the extension, hair extension photo shoots, a big production, there's a bunch of people. And in the middle of it, um, Eva or Mark Carano uh, contacts Eva. Mark Carano is like the talent dude. He's like in charge of the the superstars and the divas and yeah, they're, I guess they're, they're, they're public image and stuff right and so he contacts Eva because he sees a picture on Instagram from the previous photo shoot we were talking about and is asking her you know like what is this why weren't we told about this basically yeah. and Eva's like oh it's just for my website like you know and Mark's like well you know uh, I'm just gonna be straight with you like if you do some shit like this again without checking with WWE legal and uh, you have your husband doing it for you instead of us you're gonna be jeopardizing your position in the WWE and Eva like is not about that she's totally about WWE she loves being in the company and she's of course not gonna do anything to fuck with that that's what's made her a star 
Yeah. So Eva goes back into the photo shoot and lets John Jonathan know Chrono's stance. Um, and then Jonathan knows this, like, immediately, instead of being reasonable and being like, yeah, you're right, maybe we shouldn't press the WWE off, is like, they're only one-fourth of our income. Yeah. And it's <laughs> not important enough to shut down this it's whole ridiculous. photo shoot. There's all these people here. All this time was taken out to yeah. do this. We're not stopping. And he's just, like, being, like, a douche and putting her down, and she's trying to defend her position in WWE and be like, that's, like, my job. That's my everyday job. Like, she yeah. clearly cares about it. Yeah, it, you know, like, first things first, if, if it's, besides from income, if she likes WWE the most, then that, you know, as yeah. a supportive partner, not her, her manager, but her, her husband. But that's the problem, is like, the lines know, are oh, blurred right now yeah, with the exactly, husband manager because thing. Because both. Yeah. The, yeah, she doesn't feel like she can tell him off <laughs> either when she wants to, be, you know, uh, because of that. But I think... Uh, you know he's the 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 one quarter of her income being you know the one fourth or, yeah, supposedly yeah yeah the one, yeah one quarter of her income being uh you know WWE yeah but that is the one that affects the others the most because she is and that at this point only known for her diva status you know she's, yeah she doesn't it's not like people are like oh you're the girl from that extension line like like no you're you well, know. I think I think she's in like fitness magazines too, but yeah, not like anything like being in the WWE. That's the thing that that that's the catalyst. I think <coughs> for, like all of the growth in her other in her other uh, ventures. So right. So we finally get to the culmination of it. Eva and Jonathan are at their apartment with their creepy painting that they have of themselves <laughs> in their foyer, like like a like a photorealistic painting almost of themselves like they're so yeah. into themselves but anyway Eva <laughs> finally starts to bring up her frustrations about John's mistreatment of her and you know yeah. he's uh, he immediately is like responding harshly he's and like, she's like things I'm mad about too right and she then she's like well you know what dude I have all this built up resentment towards you because you're mean to me when we're at a shoot and then I come home and I can't just turn that off like I'm still yeah. thinking about that I don't want to be romantic towards you after that which I totally understand like he's really harsh like it's one thing to be professional in business like it's another thing to just be like berating Eva and her friends yeah that and, puts her in a weird spot yeah he is the husband and the manager and so if he disrespects her friends it's not just like oh that's my like mean manager sorry guys yeah. like that's my husband right and, like, I, so she basically is like dude I just don't think you should be my manager anymore and then he's then this is where he starts to go off and he's like this is another Eva bomb you're always dropping I mean. Eva bombs on yeah. me and your family I think is Eva bomb from, is Eva bomb a wrestling move of hers I think maybe Maybe. I don't. I, I mean, don't I think it's. It, but he's referring to something. But he's saying that she always she changes it, it to, about to be about her. She wants everything to be about yeah, her. When so that's not what this is about. And he brings. This, then he probably. starts bringing up all of his resentments towards her, like the fact that she told him that she wanted kids and then she couldn't end up having kids, like because of a medical reason. And he brings up when her implant broke and she didn't want to take the implants out because that's part of what makes her money. Yeah. And he was pissed about that and, like, just all these other complaints. And we're kind of left. Like, Eva's like, all right, well, I can't do this anymore. And Jonathan walks out. And we don't really know, like, what yeah. happens with them. I mean. I hope they break up. I don't think that they're going to. I think this is yeah, one I small fight really that we've seen. That. But I feel like Eva can do way better without this weird, bald, like, ugh. Bald. Well, <laughs> she's, I mean, I don't know. I just hated him from the beginning, and, like... Well, you know, it's, it's, it seems to be like he just doesn't deal with stress well. Like, in every instance where Well, like you're are, in the wrong yeah, business, exactly. baby. Like, yeah, mm -mm. Like, like, he, like, like, maybe they're fine off-camera when they're just hanging out and joking around, being, you know, whatever. She was kind of acting that, like she, yeah, it wasn't like not, that, though. Well, yeah, but because it, it's just, as she's saying, it, it was, like, bleeding over into their personal life. Yeah. Like, um... So like yeah I, I, exactly he probably if they're gonna continue to, to be together romantically he he probably has to stop being her manager yeah I don't I mean which and I mean if he can't if he can't respect the WWE like I yeah. would be like bye too yeah, like the, as far as being manager adults, like no yeah everything. 
for you. If I could be in the WWE, <laughs> I would never do anything to jeopardize that. Yeah, from the perspective of someone who would love to be in the WWE, <laughs> it's almost, yeah, one quarter of our... Uh, so we'll see what happens in July when Total Divas comes back with Eva and Jonathan. Yeah. But then to the bombshell of the night, uh, we talking about the Bellas, we see them meeting with their prego friend, and Brie obviously has the baby fever, um, she's talking about how she wants babies, and, um, this makes Nikki be like, well, you know, if you're questioning maybe being a mom soon, maybe I want to think about other career choices, not her real estate agent plan, which she's already got her license for, she wants to be in TV and movies. So she goes to meet with executives at Extra. She just she says that goes really well. Um, then we see Bree and Brian talking about Nikki's, you know, going out and going to these TV castings and stuff like that. And Bree yeah. kind of is like, well, to Daniel Bryan, like, well, I think I'm ready to have kids. And yeah. he's, of course, all about it. So they're <laughs> like, we're doing it. We're going to have yeah. little wrestling babies. Um... And then we see, go back to Nikki, we see her going to another casting agent, and the casting agent is like, you definitely have star potential, like, I've seen you, like, you know, we're very interested, but Nikki's like, you know, I'm on tour all the time, and her availability is is not where it needs to be at this time, is what the casting agent says, so... Nikki goes to meet with John, and they talk about it over coffee, and she brings up... Oh, which we forgot to talk about before. The whole reason that the Bellows are questioning their career is because at the beginning of the episode, Mark Carano has let them know, like, your contract is about to be up, and he's bringing them a new three-year contract to sign. So they're faced with the decision, are we going to renew our contract or not? And that's why they're yeah. thinking about the other choices. Bella's thinking about, about Bree's thinking about being yeah. a mom. Nikki's thinking about, what other media can I be a part of if I'm not going to be in WWE? Anyway. Yeah, and, it's, and because they're both thinking of these two different things, it's kind of empowering each other to do it. Right. And like, oh, my sister's leaving, then okay, this is a good time for me to right. leave too. So she has to talk to John. She brings up her reluctance to sign the new contract. John objectifies her for a little bit and talks about her, how he can't look into her eyes because she's wearing this really revealing top, and that's, their relationship is, like, very sexual. Yeah. Which is not a bad thing. They just, they yeah. seem into it. I don't know. Some people think their relationship is fake. I think it's, I mean, I think it's real. I don't know. I think they, they enjoy it. They enjoy joking around like that together. I mean, like, I, yeah. that, maybe, maybe they turn it up for the cameras, but... True. You know, it's still something that's fun for them. But anyway, besides all that, not to say that John isn't a supportive partner. Like, he... She ta- she starts to talk about how she wants to do acting, and John is, like, extremely supportive and tells her, like, you know, go for it. Like, I really respect people in the industry who don't just yeah. stay complacent, who go really out cool. and try to, yeah. you know, do other things. And he, he basically tells her that he loves the WWE, but he thinks that the Bella Twins are destined for success outside of the WWE. Yeah. And, Which you know... It was super cool of him to do that. You yeah. Because, like... It, you know, selfishly, he probably, but, probably would have preferred to just sort of be like, yeah, let's both stay with the company. You know, since we're, well, we're both, we're both with yeah, the but company. John is kind of experienced. He's about to be in that Amy Schumer movie. He's in yeah. Parks and Rex. Like, we saw him. Yeah. We, see, we keep seeing him and stuff. And right. <laughs> so they they might be a cute little power couple, but... Yeah. Um... So, anyway, flash forward to this is, this finale is taking place, like, right when Survivor Series was happening last November, and so it's the night of Survivor Series, Nikki has a match against AJ, who is the uh, Divas Champion at the time, and they show that match, you know, they show Brie kissing AJ, and we see, like, Rosa, like, orgasming in the back, watching it. (laughs) Um, <laughs> Nikki wins the championship, and you know she's still the champion. So yeah. you know, I think it's well deserved. I know a lot of people again hate on Nikki, but I think she's oh, super yeah, athletic. Yeah. She's a powerhouse, and she, personality. She's got person. Right. She's a good villain too. Like she when, when she does play the villain, she does it well, which is well, hard. She is the villain. Yeah, she is mostly always been the villain. I yeah, feel like yeah, but then for a reason. She, yeah, she's. She's good at 
And so she wins the championship. We see her, you know, going into the back room. The Divas congratulating her. Her and Brie kind of reflecting on their time in the WWE and how proud they are. Yeah. And, you know, because they really do love, you know, it's very clear that they they love yeah. what they do. And, um, and, you know. And the company loves them back. Yeah. yeah, and it's been a long time that they've been with the company at this point. So... You know, they're just kind of talking about that. And then finally it comes time to go talk to Mark Carano and let them know their decision. And Bree starts off and he's kind of like, oh, seems like someone wants to have a family. And he seems yeah. like cool with that. And then Nikki's like... He's probably expecting that. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then Nikki starts saying that, like, maybe she wants to do some other stuff. And he's like, like what, Nikki? And starts getting, like, so serious and angry. And she's also, and she's Nikki. What I was saying earlier, she's totally Nikki. And she's just like, I don't know. Oh, what yeah. She want? goes back on it, kind yeah, of. She's but, very like, excited about it. And- because kind of Mark, because well, they just made her the champ, and yeah. then that's what you're saying to Mark Carano. Yeah. Like, Mark Carano's like, probably, you know. Yeah, he's the guy. That, you're the one we're making money off right now, Nikki. Like, yeah. it, it's okay if Bree's gone for a little bit, but like, you know. Yeah, but then it ends. Yeah. It ends with him saying, "So you're gonna tell me right now, straight up, that you're not that the Bellas are no longer part of WWE?" And they both say yes. Yeah. So supposedly that's where we're ending off. Yeah. But. Which, you and I both know we've been watching wrestling, and they're still on it. So, what is that? I don't know when their contract technically ends up, yeah. though. So maybe their contract isn't up yet. Yeah, and you, you, you know, it's it it didn't they didn't sign anything either. Right, so. and it's I mean it's the last episodes. So they're trying to yeah. get something so controversial. Maybe, so you, know, you tune in July. Yeah, which of course I'm going to anyway. You don't need to Mark tempt Carano me. Mark knows that it, like even if the yeah. producers didn't say anything to him he knows that they're the divas show is, is a thing that, and they have their own storylines so he might be like a little bit more like oh you know this is like maybe they didn't, this is just a storyline in divas and i mean either way i don't think that nikki's gonna go maybe brie will i don't know if her and brian are like actively actually trying to have a baby or if they just said that on the show but it seems like they are yeah I mean, I mean, I I believe that. I mean, it it, it just makes it makes sense at this point that. It, so what do you think? They're that, waiting till after WrestleMania. What do you think? Oh uh, yeah, I think you know they're probably gonna, you know, like it, it complete yeah complete the the contract the line. and and yeah and complete the storyline because right now that the Bellas are still a, like a, a pair. Like, yeah. Uh, Nikki's sort of making the moves to be her own yeah. story and once they set her up for that if 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 anything i think if anybody leaves it'll be uh brie and uh only after they've established nikki as her own entity because otherwise you know she could it's sink or swim but yeah. without brie oh, so many things to think about so many hours spent watching Total Divas. So many hours I've spent forcing you watching Total Divas, but I think you, I think you've actually come to really love it. And I think most of the WWE fans would be the same if they weren't so negative about it. But give Divas a chance. Hashtag give Divas a chance, y'all. For real. And I mean, the acrobatics are incredible. Like, it's, you know, there's, there's something to be said for, yeah, the, a lot of the, the superstars, uh, a lot of the male superstars are uh, just incredibly athletic and, 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 and can do some pretty crazy stuff. But, like, there is something to be also said for the, the agility and, like, the you know, the divas tend to be, to be, the choreography tends to be more athletic. Like, of course. Uh, like, there's more, you know, flying through the air, <coughs> incredible feats. Like that, it's you know, it's well, it's a different type of show, but slowly it's, but surely, slowly but surely. I mean, we watched Raw tonight. You know, yeah. you saw. Oh, and there was there two. There was two. Yeah. I mean, one of them was kind of crappy. Uh, Summer and oh. AJ. Yeah. But the fact that there was two, I mean, that's pretty rare. Um, yeah. There's also some good tag team matches on the night. Anyway, this is not a Raw review. This was the Total Divas season finale review. Um, I can't wait till they're back. I love them. No. If if 
this podcast doesn't continue until it starts again, unless we find some yeah. other stuff to talk about, maybe we will. Yeah, I don't know. I know where the yeah happens. Well, we could talk about divas no, being yeah. awesome. Like, yeah. But anyway, that's Stay for us to it. figure out. Um, this is probably a good time to just be like, peace out, y'all. <laughs> Thanks great, for listening. Yeah. yeah, it was great. It was great talking to you guys. <laughs> I, don't know, I, don't know, I don't know how you sign out on one of these. <laughs> You're like, peace out and hey, drop a mic. Peace out. And I'm dropping a mic. You can't see it, but up. Oh, <laughs> dropped it. This is Alexa and Will. Signing out. Signing out. Later. Till next time. Goodbye. Divas are the shit. We just improvise that. Oh man. Yeah. Next time we should script this. We, yeah. You know. Maybe. Live and learn. All right. Bye. bye.